Hello, fifth grade. This is Mr. Salerno, and I just wanted to put this quick video together to show you how to do a couple things. First, I'm going to show you how to create a bibliography using MyBib, and then I'll show you how to submit that bibliography to complete an assignment in Canvas. All right, let's get started. We're going to start off by opening Canvas. You'll want to use the student app. That's the white background with the red logo. And then you'll probably see more courses than this, but find mine, fifth grade library Salerno. And then from there on the left side, you're going to choose assignments. And right now there should only be one assignment that's available to you, the inventor project bibliography. If you want to make this full screen, just tap the double arrow. We can always change that if we need to go back. So now that we're in the inventor project bibliography, let me just show you from top to bottom what you'll see here. Um, you notice at the top it shows you it's worth five points, but it has not been submitted yet. It's due on the due date, obviously. You're going to upload a file to complete this assignment. More on that later. If I tap on where it says submission and rubric, anything that's in blue is a hyperlink. You can click on it. It will show you that the assignment has not been submitted yet. If you tap on comments, there's been no comments, no files have been turned in, and it will show you the rubric. We'll close that down. We'll go back. The rubric is what tells you how many points you're going to earn and what is going to earn you those points. So if I click on rubric, and this is a list of all the stuff we talked about in class. I'm not going to reread it to you here. Just make sure that you're checking this as you're completing your work to make sure that you get full credit. So now that we know what we're going to do to earn points, we need to start creating our bibliography. And we're going to use that using a site called MyBib, which is hyperlinked here in a couple different spots. When I tap the MyBib link here in Canvas, it opens up a link to the website within Canvas. Any work that you do here may not get saved. So all the way in the upper right hand corner is the Safari logo. Tap that. And now we're in Safari. We've left Canvas, now we're in Safari. Here is where you want to work on your bibliography. If you do it all in Canvas, you may lose your work. To get started on your bibliography, tap Generate My Bibliography, that blue button. And then the website kind of refreshes and it lets you know how to get started by adding um, citations to your project. Now I opened up a project here that I've already completed. This is something I was working on earlier. So let me start a new project. I'm going to tap start a new project. I'm going to give my new project a name. I'll tap my three little dots there. That's the one I just started, the one in red. Rename. I'll title this Inventor Project Bibliography or Bibliography. Hit enter and now that title appears at the top of my page. Um, it should automatically be in MLA8 format, but if it doesn't, you can tap that and choose that style. MLA is what we use in elementary school, middle school, and high school. There are no citations in this project. We're going to work on adding them. Now, what I recommend is before you even start adding citations, open up all the tabs, open up all the websites that you use to complete your project. All right, we're going to start by adding our first citation, and to do that, we just tap Add citation. And you're given the option to input a website, a book. Website and book should take care of most of your needs, but if you find you do need something else, tap more and you could open up a list of all different types of reliable sources. Now my bib makes it really easy to complete your bibliography. All you have to do is literally copy and paste the URL. That's the web address. So we'll start by going to our world book article. And typically I would say copy the address from the address bar, but it's formatted a little differently because it's a link through our school. So what you should do instead is in World Book, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the article until you see in red print how to cite this article. It'll appear right underneath the contributor's name. That's the author. Tap how to cite. And then where you see MLA format, don't copy the entire thing. Just copy the web address. Just tap and hold and then drag. I'm going to copy that. I'll go back.
back to easy bib. Tap in the bar, tap again, paste. There's my web address. And then I'll tap the blue magnifying glass to search. There's my result. I tap that and now it opens up the editor. Easy Bib is going to let me know if there's any important missing information, like the web page author, for example. Now, I know for a fact that this article has an author. For whatever reason, the author's name doesn't carry over, so you will have to go back and find it. Now, let's see. The author of this article, right there underneath contributor, Teresa M. Collins. And to make sure you're spelling correctly, I know I'm not the best speller all the time, I'm going to copy her first name paste her first name, Teresa Collins is her last name. I'll copy that and I'll paste that under last name. So now I have the author's first name, the author's last name, editor, you probably won't need an editor's name. The date published, usually just the year for that is fine. The title of the article or page, the website's name is World Book Online. The publisher, now we should be able to get the publisher. So let's go back and double check how to cite this article. The publisher would be in italics. And there it is right there, World Book Student. World Book Student. I spelled all those right, I think. Uh, the date access or viewed. The date access is just the day you looked up the information. If you don't remember, just use today's date. I don't need to add an annotation, but I do need to tap save. And there it is. There's my citation. Now, obviously we know that we don't only, don't only use one source of information. So when you're ready to add your second source, tap the green plus sign in the lower right hand corner. I'll add another website. This is from InfoBits. And same as um, World Book Online, use the link at the bottom. Tap again, paste, search. There's our Thomas Alva Edison article from InfoBits. Again, the author's name doesn't carry over. And even scrolling on the InfoBits page, I don't see an author's name listed. Even when I go back down to the citation, there's no author listed. So in that case, you don't list an author if there's no author's name given. Scroll down, date published in 2014, title of the article is filled in, the website is filled in, the URL or the web address is fill in, filled in. So let's fill in date access, and then scroll down for save. Our bibliography now has two sources. Let's add a third source, and that source is going to be a book. When you're searching for a book, type the entire title. So if you're using one of the Who Was books, Who Was Thomas Edison. And there it is. Who was Tom, Al, Thomas Alva Edison? Uh, sometimes there's a lot of books with similar titles, so you may need to search with the author's name as well. Editors, again, we don't need to worry about. Translator, we don't need to worry about. Date publish is filled in. Title of the book is filled in for us. Don't worry about edition or volume. Publisher is filled in. Very good. Date access. You always want to have that. And if you don't remember the exact date you looked up the information, just use whatever today's date is. Now notice my bib added that citation in the middle of my other two. That's because EasyBib automatically puts it in alphabetical order for you, which is the correct way to list all of your entries. All right, I think I'm done here. I have two trustworthy sources from the web. I have one trustworthy source from a book. I'm ready to complete and submit my bibliography. I'll tap download. Let's tap copy and paste the clipboard in the upper right hand corner right next to the X. That will copy the entire page for you automatically. Check mark lets us know it's copied. Exit Safari and open up a Microsoft Word document. You'll want to start with a new document so when Microsoft Word opens choose blank document. And let's tap, whoops, come back here and paste. Now that's all the information we just created. But you can see that what we just pasted in Microsoft Word doesn't exactly match what we created in MyBib. The MyBib version is a lot cleaner, so let's edit the Word document so that it looks just as clean. Put the cursor in front of the line you want to create a space for, and then tap Enter. 
Now, if you're using your um, iPad keyboard, you could actually use the arrows to move the cursor anywhere you need to. It's a lot easier than tapping on the screen, for me anyway. Works Cited is at the top of my page. I can leave it as Works Cited or I can change it to Bibliography. Either one is fine. And now what I really need to do is make sure that gets centered. And here's how you don't center something. Space, 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 space. That's not how you center text. Tap on the four lines there with the paintbrush for paragraph formatting. Just choose center. Only the title needs to be centered. The rest of it does not. All right, that's it. My bibliography is done. Let me save it just in case anything happens. In the upper left-hand corner, tap the page with the three dots. Auto save is turned on. That's good. And I'm gonna tap save. Now, when this comes up, make sure you choose your OneDrive. Anything saved to your OneDrive is safe though. And again, give it a title you're going to recognize. Inventor Project Bibliography or Bibliography. And tap save. That document is now saved in my OneDrive. The final step here is to turn in the assignment on Canvas. Let's go back to Canvas. It may need to refresh for us since we've been away for a little bit. Go back into my course, go back to the assignment, and can't miss it down at the bottom there, submit assignment. Now we have three options down at the bottom, camera, library, and files. We're going to submit a file, so tap file. Make sure OneDrive is selected, not on my iPad, OneDrive, Files, and then scroll until you see the document that you saved, which I called, there it is, Inventor Project Bibliography. Tap on that file, and there it is. In the upper right hand corner, you see the option to submit, tap Submit. Assignment submitted, wahoo! successfully submitted, successfully. That doesn't mean you got full credit. That just means you turned it in. Um, notice at the top, it also says submitted and the time and date that you turned it in. To know how you did, tap submission and rubric. All you see so far is the file you turned in because obviously I haven't graded it yet. When I do grade it, this is where you'll see your score. If I send you any messages or any notes, you will see those right here. I also want you to notice at the bottom of the screen, the blue ribbon that used to say submit now says resubmit assignment. If you get some feedback from me, if I give you a comment here that you didn't do something correctly or you only got one point for formatting correctly, if you did not get full credit, you can revise it and turn it in again. I'll tell you exactly what you need to do to earn full credit and here's where you can do that. It's the same process. So just to review what we did, we learned how to create a bibliography using MyBib and how to complete an assignment on Canvas by turning in a document. If you have any questions, you know you can always find me in the library or email me. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, if you have any other ideas or suggestions for things that you would like to see in the future, uh, shoot me an email, let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And good luck on those inventor projects.